Hi, I'm the lone journalist for KRAZ TV. Doc Martin here with another great book review. Well, I've got three of them today. And yes, this is another wonderful book. It's, uh, well, kind of uplifting and it's more of a sad story too, but it's a true story. By Joseph M. Marshall III. A Lakota History, The Journey of Crazy Horse. What a great person he is. A Lakota. I'm not going to say he was an American. He was not. He was a Lakota. Anyways, the reason why, well, and my interest is because I had done another book review a few years ago or a couple years ago about Crazy Horse and a at the end, towards the end, I said that he was treacherously killed, and I said, well, I better check those facts because I don't want to tell you something that wasn't, that really wasn't happening. What's sad to say is that that, that is a true story about how he happened, but uh, Tatanka, that's Lakota for the buffalo, his name, and, uh, uh, In the Lakota is uh, well, I, I don't need to s sit here and not be sounding like I'm doing anything. Maybe it's in the last, very last part. Here it is. Tasunke Witko. Of course I'm butchering Lakota. <laughs> Tasunke Witko. Lakota Wika. Well, he was the, the last. And, uh, well, Honor song for a thunder d a dreamer. That's what he really was. This guy that wrote it is a Lakota through and through. So uh, he's heard the tales as unblemished as they get. So it says. Well, this is the verification, though. Uh, the, uh, so he had to go see uh, Randall, the white man, that had been fighting, and, and they had to go to Camp Robinson. He said, there are good men here, but not enough to take care of the helpless ones. So he's decided to have to turn himself in, you know, because thousands of men with lots of bullets and only a few hundred warriors left. But uh, it says, so the young men nodded and went away. So the night passed and the night came. When the sun arose, he hurried to the soldier house to speak to Lieutenant Lee to assure him that he had not changed his mind and was ready to speak with Randall to make things good. So with... Touch the clouds, these are his other uh, fellows. Swift Bear and Black Crow along, they started out for Camp Robinson. The first group of blue-coated Lakotas met them along the way. They said nothing and formed a wide half-circle around Crazy Horse and the other. Now the blue coats means that they worked for the white men. So they were scouts, but first... Before they could get the Lakotas rounded up, they had to use the crows and Blackfeet and some snakes and uh, 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 tribes called the snakes and all, who were, I don't know if they were mortal enemies, but they warred amongst themselves, and so the, the soldiers used them to track and to help them fight uh, their own fellow Native Americans. Well, they weren't Native Americans, they were Lakotas. And, Anyways, 
Further on, more blue coats arrived as soon they became a mob of more than 60. It was then Crazy Horse knew there was trouble. So, it says on the, on the shore of the lake, the people rose up and grabbed the rider, pulling him down from behind. Now, these are visions that he had. He, he would go up and sit alone and maybe it smoked tobacco or whatever, but anyways, he had these uh, certain visions that he had been having over the while, and, and this is one of them that he had had. Uh, it says, All the noise was the running and scuffling as if men were pushing each other. A crazy horse was pushed towards a square house made of logs, a strange place for Randall to be. Before he could help himself, he was through the open doorway. There was a bad smell. A man with dark hair and braids rose from a corner. Then he saw the iron bars. He spun on a hill and saw a man, a little big man, blocking the opening. Crazy horse shoved the shorter man inside. Tried to push past, but almost immediately felt little big man grab both of his arms from behind. With a great effort, he pulled himself through and reached through the opening of his blanket for his knife. Let me go, he said to the little big man. Let me go. The man, the Oglala warrior who had ridden into battle with him, stood fast. Perhaps it was the blue coat of the soldier that had turned his heart. With a sudden swipe, Crazy Horse slashed the arm of the coat and immediately blood flowed. And the little big man jumped back. And from the middle of a comp from the middle of the confusion came a soldier thrusting with a knife at the end of his rifle. I guess that was a bayonet. Those near him heard uh, Crazy Horse gasp and saw his knees begin to wobble. Brown hand still holding him as the soldier withdrew the long knife. Let me go, they heard him say quietly. You've gotten me hurt. Then he fell. So he was treacherously killed by some of his own people. He was covered with a red blanket. He tried to focus on the form of his father, Worm. His father, Worm, was also named Crazy Horse, too. And uh, they gave him opium, and they watched the slight rise and fall. And then uh, his last words, tell the people, they should not depend on me any longer. Then he died. So his father and his mother uh, went to go bury him and take him off. And they said, well, load him in a wagon. They said, there's no way that he's going to be carried out of here in a white man's wagon. So he's put on the back of a, a trap voice and, and taken away. They took him off and, and did something with him so they didn't let everybody else know where he is. So Crazy Horse is <laughs> still out there somewhere in the ether. So he was an upright man. He was just. He never wore the war bonnet. He could have, they said. So that's not me. He also said, uh, Nothing, because they said they would like to have the, the warriors uh, tell their exploits, and so they would do their antics and stuff in the lodges and, and tell their wintertime stories and all that, but uh, Crazy Horse, they called him Light Hair when he was young, never did sit around and expound on his adventures and stuff. Uh, he was taught by, by the medicine people, and he was taken in by everybody to... His mother died many years earlier, and so he always loved whoever took care of him. And he became a great person, and he took care of many people. They had the Sand Creek Massacre, where the soldiers killed every one of them, and then there was uh, the Hundred Creek, where, they, where the natives got back a little bit on them and uh, grass, uh, greasy grass, and then the little bighorn. Now there were three divisions, and uh, 
it was three days, and so it was quite a lot of fighting that uh, a crazy horse and uh, the other warriors had to do. So in the two skirmishes, eventually, that's where uh, Custer met his demise. But uh, they didn't kill them all. He killed maybe 400, and there were 200 left or something. I don't know about that, but, but anyways, he put the hurt on them. Here comes the rain. Been waiting for that. Anyway, it's the tears of the sky crying or weeping for a crazy horse. Don't weep too much. Think of the greatness and you'll go on through life. Remember life's a cycle. Thanks for watching KRAZ TV and the journey of Crazy Horse by John M. Marshall III. This is KRAZ TV saying this will be at the Zero Channel because it's a story that, well, it's true. KRAZ TV.